Mr. Speaker, please permit me to firstly thank the people of Grosley who gave me such an overwhelming mandate during the election of July 26, 2021. Mr. Speaker, in a campaign where I waited 18 months before being selected and then went through three weeks of being described as broke and a little boy by my opponent, the Grosile people came out and gave me the most votes ever tallied by anyone in the history of this great nation. And as Rocket from the lovely community of Nobe would say, you to equate one nom te ti boy. You to equate one nom te ti boy. And so, Mr. Speaker, to the people of the great Septarian of Grosley, I once again say thank you. Mr. Speaker, let me also express my sincere sympathies to the families of Henrietta Eugene of Riviermita, Edward Kazemi of Yesikwe, Kissin, Mr. White, Costo from Monsepa, Vincent Felicia from Duramo, Sonny Boy, and Mian also from Duramo, and others who lost loved ones in the past few weeks. Mr. Speaker, just before rising to address this honorable house, I was sent a message from the people of Grand Riviere that the PRO of the Grosley Minibus Association, Chris, passed away as a result of COVID-19. May God continue to provide strength and courage to all these bereaved. Because when I leave this honorable house, I am on my way to be with yet another family who falls prey to this beast. Mr. Speaker, while I have your indulgence, permit me to say on behalf of the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, congratulations to two St. Lucian cricketers who have gained selection on the West Indies Under-19 Rising Stars squad to tour England. McKenny Clark, who, rise in Cash, who resides in Castries North, perhaps had the benefits of a heavy roller in his constituency to bat on. <laughs> Blue wave. <laughs> McKenny Clark resides from Castries North, and of course, Akimo Geese, who resides in the great state of Grosley. He plays for Central Castries. <laughs> he has his roots there. <laughs> Akimo Gis, at the age of 17, Mr. Speaker, has been named captain of the West Indies under-19 team. What a wonderful prospect he is. Let me also congratulate Mr. Speaker Kiana Joseph, who has been recalled to the West Indies senior female cricket team. She is from Granny Vegrosley. And also, Jonah Eugene, selected to join the Punjab Kings as a net bowler, also from the community of Grosily. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, these individuals continue to work on their craft throughout this difficult time and deserve great recognition for their accomplishments. Mr. Speaker, I stand here today to speak for just about five minutes to endorse the amendments made to the COVID-19 Prevention and Control Act. Mr. Speaker, under Clause 5 of the Bill, Section 6 of the Act titled Composition of the Command Center, we see for the first time the inclusion of a representative of the National Youth Council. And this is a great achievement by this government because, as was just presented, we see more and more young people being affected by this virus. And for years, they stood as the biggest block, the highest population in this nation, and it took a government of the St. Lucia Labour Party to give them a seat at the table. And Mr. Speaker, I remember a few years ago watching a video where a then member for Castries Southeast said to young people in a forum, 
that young people believe they're entitled, that young people think that they just deserve anything. And I remember a young man from the region standing up and say, we do not just want things, we do not just want things, we want to sit at the table because every decision made affects us. And the St. Lucia Labour Party and this government has recognized this. And so we have an individual from the youth sector recommended on our, our um, control, on our command, in fact, not command center, our management center. Mr. Speaker, under Clause 4 of the bill, Section 4 and 5, we see a government understanding that their role is not necessarily to stomp the authority over people, but to manage COVID-19. So this government has decided to change the name from the establishment of a command center to that of a COVID management center. And so we won't command the people right now to take the vaccine, but we will strongly and vehemently advise our young people that the best way to fight this disease is through vaccination. And I remember going to social media on the weekend and expressing my views, Mr. Speaker, and saying to the people of this nation, the young people of this nation, that vaccination may be the only way to deal with this scourge right now. And I was attacked by certain members of the religious community who said to me, God is the only answer. And I said to them, I remember a parable when I was going to the Glad Tidings Pentecostal Church of a young individual who was drowning, Mr. Speaker. And the boat came, the first boat came, and the man on the boat asked him to jump on, and he said, no, God will help me. A second boat came, Mr. Speaker, and the man who was drowning said, no, God would help me. When this young man met his demise and went into heaven, he asked God, why didn't you help me? God turned to him and said to him, you fool, I sent two boats and you never jumped on from the help I gave you. And I remember that parable because it's apropos today, my people, that the science that the honorable leader speaks of, the doctors that we have entrusted in this country have recommended vaccination as one of the only ways to deal with this school. And I will strongly recommend to our people to get vaccinated. And so, people from the religious community, I say to you, God is good. He knows what he's doing. Mr. Speaker, in the discussion of this COVID-19 bill, it would be remiss of me not to share my views on a critical aspect of our fight against COVID, and that is our health infrastructure. Mr. Speaker, I was indeed heartbroken when I toured the construction site of the St. Jude's Hospital. As a young man who grew up in a country that ensured that the health and well-being of our people took first priority, I sat back and I stood there and I remembered the millions and millions of dollars borrowed only to be now standing in an area as was accurately described as a car park. Nothing inside, cladding on the outside. And then I thought of my people in Grosley, population, Mr. Speaker, of almost 30,000 people. And on a weekend, when people come, come to meet their relatives, perhaps a population on a weekend of beyond 45,000. And when things are normal, those who come and enjoy entertainment will provide another 5,000, a population of over 40,000 on a weekend with only one ambulance in the vicinity of the fire station. And I say, what has been done over the last five years with the millions of dollars borrowed in the name of COVID-19. And I remember Mr. Speaker going to the community of Ridgery and a mother saying to me that she had a son who was ill and they made a call to the Grosley Polyclinic and was told that there was no ambulance at the Grosley Polyclinic. And that mother explained to me that that child, they eventually called the Grosley Fire Station and by the time they received ambulance assistance, that child was gone. And I asked 
myself, where has all the millions borrowed in the name of COVID? Where has that money been spent? And why, upon entering into this government, that we do not have the requisite supplies and infrastructure for our people? This is why, Mr. Speaker, we saw within the last five years millions, and we must continue to say it, millions spent on horses. Mr. Speaker, I stand proud in this house today as a young man who grew up knowing the Salusa Labour Party as the party who truly cared about young people. And when this Prime Minister decided during this Hadwava season that over 14,000 parents with over 14,000 children from this great nation be exempted from paying facilities fees. I had to applaud the, the actual man that is Philip Chapin. Because Mr. Speaker, we don't understand that today I can go in Grosley and know that the parents who are exempted from paying those facilities fees can buy some vitamin C tablets in the fight against COVID-19. I am buoyed by the fact that these parents can go home and pay a water bill, an electricity bill. And I am buoyed by the fact that we have a current government that cares about the people of this country. And so, Mr. Speaker, this current government has decided through this bill they will do what other great leaders have done in the times past. They will speak softly, but carry a big stick. I think it was Teddy Roosevelt who said, he will speak softly, but carry a big stick. And so, this present government has introduced ticketable offenses. And in Schedule 2 of this bill, I am particularly buoyed by the fact that persons who fail to be to remain at quarantine facilities will be charged a fine of $850. This is because from being in the community, we have heard stories of persons going in and around the community who know full well they have contracted COVID-19 and they've not done anything but to continue being in the community. And so, Mr. Speaker, I continue to encourage our people to take this time seriously. I continue to say to our people, that we need to social distance. I continue to say to our young people, the future is in your hands. And perhaps vaccination may be the way we can see a prosperous solution. And so, Mr. Speaker, I have full confidence in the member for Castries East as a leader of this government and support him and support him and the member from Beaufort North as they work with various stakeholders to ensure we manage this COVID-19 pandemic. I ask everyone in this great nation of ours to join me in this fight as I support wholeheartedly this COVID-19 prevention and control amendment. I thank you.